Hi, everybody. My name is Bill Troutman, and I am your Calculus One instructor. Um, today's lecture is on Test 1B, the show you work part of the, re, uh, the test. So don't forget this week in Test four, uh, Week 4, you have a multiple choice part of the test, which is worth 50 points, and then a show your work part of the test. Uh, which is uh, 50 points. So he, I'm going to go over uh, eight questions that are similar to the ones that you have on the test. Um, this is the show your work. You have to show your work on the show your work part of the test. I can't stress this enough. Do not say I use my calculator and this is what I got for my asymptotes. No. I need to see the work. You can do anything you want. You can use that calculator all you want for the multiple choice part of the test. But for the 1B, test 1B, you have to show your work. Physically show your work uh, on how you get the answer. And you, you can verify it on a calculator, but you have to show me mathematically how you got to the answer. All right, so let's get this show on the road. The first question looks like this. Find an equation. Uh, that is, goes through this point. Find an equation that goes through that point. And the slope equals zero. So find an equation that goes through this point and the slope equals zero. That's all you have to do. Write the equation down. Um, so you have to show some kind of work. Now for this particular problem, I would just draw <laughs> a Cartesian coordinate system. There's the x-axis. There's the y-axis. Five, one, two, three, four, five, seven is right here. The point five, seven is right there. Um, and I j find an equation where the slope is zero and it goes through this point. So I have to find the, the equation of a line that goes through that point, but the slope is zero. Well, the slope is zero means a zero slope means you're dealing with a horizontal line. So the line has to be horizontal going through that point. I mean, this is how I would draw it. I still have to write the equation. Uh, how do you write the equation for a horizontal line? All horizontal lines, uh, the equations start with y equals, and it it's y equals whatever point it goes through, y equals 7. That's the full equation. That's it. That's an equation for a horizontal line, and it goes through the point 5, 7. And that's all the work I'd want to see on this test. I mean, draw the picture and write the equation. Um, you can do some other things. Uh, y minus uh, y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, right? The point slope equation. Uh, if the slope is zero, we said, and, and my x point is five, and my y point is seven, zero times this is zero. Take the seven to the other side. So either way, I'm going to get y equals 7. So you can show your work like this using the point-slope formula in this case, uh, or you could just draw the picture and show me the equation. All right? Um, I mean, this is an algebra problem. We're in calculus. Uh, this is a very basic algebra problem. So everybody should be on board and be able to write this. So the next question on the test will be something similar. Uh, you're going to have to write an equation. It's an algebra problem. 
whole first week of class, you're supposed to do nothing but algebra going through this point. And it's perpen uh, not perpendicular, parallel to um, x minus y equals 7. So write an equation that goes through this point and parallel to this line. Um, thing we need to know is we need to find the slope of this line because parallel lines have the same slope. So if we want to write the equation that goes through this point and parallel to this, if we know the slope to the, on the right side, then we'll find the slope for the, the left side. So to find this slope, I'm going to get y by itself and bring the 7 over. I subtract 7 and I add y to both sides and I get y equals x plus 7. You see, if you take the y over and the 7 over, uh, wait, that's not right. It's a minus 7 and a minus 7, a plus y and a plus y. So I get x plus, I get x minus 7. So I get y equals x minus 7. By the way, even if I got that wrong, that doesn't matter. Um, if I look at this slope-intercept equation, y equals mx plus b, that's my y-intercept, but I don't care about that. All I care about is the slope. So the slope is a number in front of x, and the number in front of x is 1. So the slope on this side is 1. So since they're parallel lines, the slope on this side is 1. So I have a point and a slope. Um, now I just have to write the equation. I'm going to use point-slope equation. Uh, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Uh, this is y1 and this is x of the first point. y1 is 4. The slope is 1. And minus x1 is a negative 6. So I get y minus 4 equals, if I distribute a 1, 1 times x is x, and 1 times minus minus is a plus, 1 times 6 is 6. Um, there's my answer, just depends on what form it wants. Um, I, if I keep it in slope-intercept form, I just add 4, add 4, and I get y equals x plus 10. Okay, so I mean, that's my equation. It's multiple choice uh, for this. I mean, this is slope intercept form. The answer for this particular problem on the test, the answer is multiple choice, but you still have to show all your work. <laughs> that's weird how I have multiple choice on the show you work part of the test. If you select the correct answer and don't show any work, you get zero credit. All right, next question. If I have a function, uh, and where's sine x? Um, and I have another function. And I have, let's call it g sub x equals pi over 4x. Let's find, let me find, um, I don't know what I want to find. I want to find this. Find... I could spell find. Uh, find that. OK. 
Okay, so one first thing, and this is a composite. First find G when X is three. Here's G. And when X is three, uh, I get pi times three over four. So G of three equals three pi. Except I couldn't write it correctly. Equals three pi over four. Then I'm going to put that into F. I'm putting three pi over four into F. F equals the sine of X. So I'm putting three pi over four in there. Uh, and then on my unit circle, I want to go find the sine of three pi over. So if I look at my unit circle, uh, three pi over, f what happened? There we go. If I look at my unit circle, 3 pi over 4 right here, the sine is the y part of the circle. So the sine of 3 pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. And that's my answer. That's the final answer. Um, this is really important. Don't give me no decimal answers ever unless I ask for a decimal answer. No decimal answers. Um, if we're doing a problem that's a real world situation, so what's the speed of the plane or something, and it's 72.9 miles per hour or something, uh, yes. But if I don't ask for a decimal answer, it's not a real world problem or something, you don't put a decimal answer down. Okay, this is the show your work part. If you plug all this in the calculator, and whatever this equals three times 3.14 divided by four, if you give me a decimal answer, that's not work. This is work. Uh, don't tell me, oh, I plugged it in my calculator and I got this. That's not showing your work. That's plugging it in your calculator. You can plug it in your calculator to verify, but on the show your work test, you don't, <laughs> you don't, plug things in and say you're plugging it in the calculator. This is what I got. You have to show how you got to the answer. All right, next question. Uh, find uh, the inverse of a function. Uh, I'm going to write down my function. It could be any function. It's just, it's an, this is an algebra problem. Uh, X plus two over three and find its inverse. Do you remember the steps for finding an inverse? First you change F of X to Y. Then you interchange the X and Y variables. And then solve for Y. So I'm going to take the three to the other side by multiplying by three. And I have three X equals Y plus two. Then I'm going to subtract two and y equals 3x minus 2. And the last step normally uh, is change y to this because that's the symbol for an inverse 
uh, 3x minus 2. So this is the inverse of that. All right, so just know the steps for an inverse. The problem's going to be a little different, but I mean, it's going to be very similar to this. That's all the work you need to do. Maybe a little neater than me, but that's all the work you need to do. Once again, there are eight questions on uh, this part of the test. I'm going to show you work part of the test. Um, next question, I have a function. I have another function. Um, no, let's just make it like this. And I want to find this. I want to find the composite. In other words, we're putting the G value into the X of the F. No, we're not. We're putting this. this or this value into oh wait there's more to this question there's more to this question good because this kind of hard <laughs> i want to find the limit as x approaches two this is what i want to wait that's still not what i want to find i'm sorry this is what I want to find. I'm trying to look at the test. This is what I want to find. Find the limit as X approaches two of this composite. So first, this is the problem, finally. So first we have to find this when X approaches two. So here I'm going to find this. putting two in the function f when x approaches two. Uh, two times two is four times two is eight times two is 16. So three times 16 plus seven, four times two is eight. Uh, yeah, uh, three times 16 is 48. Uh, 48 plus seven is 55. So for this part, I get 55 F of F of two, I get 55. I'm plugging 55 into the value for G. So I'm plugging this 55 is 55. Now do you see this turns to 55 and I'm going to plug that into the X value for G. My G equals 55 squared. And so whatever 55 squared is, is our answer. I can put in my calculator real quick. The answer to this problem was 3025. All righty. There's a lot of algebra stuff. I mean, other than the limit part, it's just algebra. It's a composite. It's just algebra stuff. Luckily, on the next test, we'll do some uh, calculus. All right, let's find the limit. Find the limit as the change of X approaches zero for the following function, X plus change of X squared minus two X plus change of X 
uh, plus seven, uh, minus minus x square minus two plus seven and all this is over the change of x so we want to find uh, wait, this is minus 2x. Change that. I, I just made a change. That's a minus 2x. Okay, so uh, first you're going to FOIL this, right? This right here is x plus change of x times x plus change of x. And you get x squared plus 2x change of x uh plus change of x square when you foil this when you distribute and foil this here i get negative 2x minus 2 change of x plus 7 then i'm going to distribute a negative sign minus x square plus 2x and a minus 7 and all this is over change of x. I'm not going to put it over change of x yet, but all that's over change of x. Look what happens here. Minus 7 and plus 7 cancel. One's a plus, one's a minus. 2x and minus 2x cancel. And x squared and minus x squared cancel. So I'm left with 2x, I am left, I think I'm left, uh-oh, my pen stopped working. There we go, I'm back. My pen had stopped working for a second. Oh, it's still, what is going on? Uh, I'm left with 2x change of x plus change of x square minus 2 change of x. And don't forget this whole thing is over change of x. If you look at the top, I can factor out a change of x. Uh, over change of x. I factored out a change of x out of all of these. Uh, those cancel. I'm left with 2x plus change of x minus 2. And don't forget, that's not the answer because we're taking the limit as change of x approaches 0. So change of x is approaching 0. So my final answer would be 2x minus 2. Oh, okay. Um, let's see the next problem. Find all vertical asymptotes of the function. Uh, show all factoring works. <laughs> you definitely have to show factoring work. Uh... Let me bring up something. Okay, it says find all vertical asymptotes, if any. Find all uh, vertical asymptotes. So in order to do this, you have to factor and show me your factoring work. Uh, x squared minus x squared minus 16. You have to square each. 
you know, four goes in here and X goes in here, then it factors to X, uh, X, a four, a four, a plus, a minus. So that's the top. One's a plus and one's a minus. The bottom uh, factor is 28 is, uh, eight is one times 28, two times 14, uh, four times seven is 28. Uh, how do I get a positive 11? And none of these give me a positive of 11 when I add them unless I do plus 4 and plus 7. So that's all the work I want to see for the factoring of that. And I get an X plus 4 and an X plus 7. Well, if you look here, for a negative 4 makes th this undefined and a negative 7. Uh, right, x plus four equals zero. X plus seven equals zero. Uh, makes it unde makes the bottom of that fraction undefined. However, since the four cancels out with the top, it's not an asymptote. It's only a whole. Um, so we only have one asymptote. The other, this one is not an asymptote. Still makes the bottom undefined, but it's a whole. An asymptote is an invisible line your graph cannot cross. A hole is just a hole in a graph. And if you graph it, you'll see that actual hole. You just have to zoom in and you'll get very close to that hole and you'll see it. Um, and the last problem is very similar to this. The last problem, you have to factor everything. It says, find the, so problem eight, the last problem on the test, uh, find all the X values, X values that make this uh, non-continuous, not continuous. Um, and if you look, uh, negative four, the answer is, X equals negative four and X equals negative seven. Both of those do not make this problem uh, continuous because there's a hole or an asymptote at those spots. Uh, but it also says which of these discontinuities are removable? Uh, well, removable is a hole. So this is a hole. It's removable. Uh, X minus seven is an asymptote. We say that's non-removable. So for the last question is very similar to question seven, except we don't want you to label them as asymptotes. We want you to label them as removable or non-removable. I mean, they both could be removable. They both could be non-removable. One could be removable. One could be non-removable. Um, when you have the bottom of a fraction, you know, that, that makes the, the fraction undefined. A hole, if it cancels out with something on the top, it's a hole, and we call that a removable discontinuity. If it's an asymptote, it's a non-removable discontinuity. We didn't remove any piece of the graph. There's just a, a gap, an invisible line that your graph cannot cross. And that is the test review. Um, if, you, if you find problems similar to these on the homework or in the review somewhere, uh, I'd look at them because this is the type of question uh, that's on the show your work. And you have to show your work. Uh, do everything you can to show as much work as possible. I take off points when you don't show work. Let me know if you have any questions. You guys have a great week.